Hello everyone, this is your boy Wicked Fox, and today we're just going to chat, have a good time, relax with you guys, and, um, you know, just see what you guys think about trials. Do you guys enjoy it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, this is what I usually do is when I'm out and about, you know, doing bounties, I'll go in and try to just make sure I get my headshots. Um, that way when I go into um, trials or competitive, you know, I'm not... You know, it's not um, something that's strange to me, you know, because if you're going for body shots, most likely, especially how everything is now, you're not going to go flawless because you're going to get your butt kicked every single time. Uh, so make sure that you're always going for the head. It'll make it so much easier. Now, I've already gone flawless, and then I'm just testing out weapons, seeing uh, which ones in my vault that are, you know, worthy of keeping because if, what's the best way to test them out bring them in trials and if the damage isn't that great um why keep it i mean you're going to be in an engagement with somebody and you're always going to be um not have the upper hand now see i got wounded uh get some life back this auto rifle is horrible i was testing it out i had good perks on it <coughs> but it's not very good you can you can tell by movement how fast you feel like you can move, um, how much damage it does, uh, how far it shoots. Uh, you know, if, if you're somewhere within like the shotgun range, you know, uh, fusion rifles, and you can't go past that with like an auto rifle because all of a sudden then your 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 reticle is going all over the place because it can't keep on target because they're too far away. Just imagine. They're always going to have the upper hand on you. So why keep that weapon? You know, so that's why you test out the weapon to see, you know, hey, is, can this keep up with another weapon? If it's not, you know, that's easy way to get rid of it. So this, this sidearm, I'd have to say it's one of the best sidearms in the game. I mean, it's just, it's just um, great. I mean, the accuracy on it, if you can hit your headshots, I mean, you can take down somebody fast. Yeah, guy did the right thing, pushed in with the shotgun. He had something that was close range. While I was attacking someone else, he came in. That was very good, and it was bad to put myself in a position where I could allow that. You know, but it's always good if you can record your videos, see your mistakes, you know, things that you've done, you know. Yeah, I definitely love this sidearm. I'm not a bow person, but I had this bow in my my vault I wanted to see if it was any good you know uh, each weapon that you use you gotta learn how to use it wow what the hell was that <laughs> I don't know if that if that's it was normal or you know but uh, you know I thought I'd show it and uh, but watch your radars and trials you know try to get the flanks try to get the angles Use your close range weapons. Good job, he left. He's kind of cornered in here. See, he was going to push in with the shotgun. My teammates are a little too far away for my liking. Uh, I am an aggressive player and I'm up in your face. And, you know, I want to get the kill as fast as possible. And uh, the teammates that I'm with are very standoffish. Maybe they're not good. Maybe they. You know, they don't know how to play the game. Maybe uh, it's your style. It could be a whole bunch of things, you know. But you have to blend in, especially when you're doing trials solo and you're not able to communicate with them. You, I mean, this guy, he's got a flawless 11 times, you know. But there's a lot of times I see people go, you know, have these flawless symbols and, you know, they are horrible players. Um, they just put yourself in bad positions. You know, sometimes they're too standoffish, and you know, if it doesn't work with your playing style, uh, it could it can clash. But you know, if you watch your YouTubers and you learn, you learn, you know, in situations where people are overcrowding you and what they do and um, positions that they took, you know, that help <clears throat> that help, you know.
Now, I love using the uh, strand build because it lets me get to point A to point B so much faster. And, uh, you know, if I wanted to snipe and be at a distance, it allows me to move up quicker because I want to be close to my teammates. Not overcrowding. You know, I don't want to be so close where I'm, like, bugging them, but I want to be close enough to be able to get the revive. Uh, that's another thing with the strand that I really, really enjoy. He was probably watching my strand, you know, since I got stuck on the stairs. He's like, where is this guy? <laughs> you know, um, now that my teammates are all down, <laughs> just me by myself. And it happens a lot. And I'm sure it happens to you guys too. Do you have a special weapon that you guys enjoy? I try to use... Sometimes I, I use the meta when I'm trying to go flawless and then I switch over to guns that are not as good, testing them out, seeing if I can win um, with them. Now this submachine gun, fantastic. If you have it, it's great. Now I, I'll tell you if, if a gun is horrible or not, you know, that I'm using in this video. If it's bad, I'll, I'll let you know. And um, if I think it's not worth it. See, you can see the little placements where people go. You get used to them when you're playing. And, you know, some of them that you might like. That's why you watch these videos. You see where people go, you know, where they're hiding. Um, you know, that little ledge. It's, it's a good ledge. I use it myself. But maybe you've never seen that before. You know, you, you see what works um, for me, what works against me. Um, you know, uh, just because, you, you know, you die doesn't mean that you can't come back. You just have to learn to change your, your game plan. You know, maybe they had the better approach on it. Uh, maybe your team was, you know, too standoffish and you allowed to get the res. Uh, these are things that you have to to learn to switch up during the match. Don't just keep doing the same thing because they've already learned to beat you on that. So you got to switch it up. You got to find their weakness. If they're using shotguns, obviously, you know, yet see if they have long range if they don't have long range keep them at a distance if they're short range you know stay out of that distance range uh you know anytime that you see that radar pop up red you know take a step backwards you know because you're not you don't want to be in their their area of distance uh like for instance this guy's down well you don't want to allow them to get the revive because then it's going to be that much harder for you to fight that guy all over again so you know do what you can to keep him down and press on him so that you guys all move forward as a team and then that way you push him away from that and then you can decide if you want to go and fight him or allow them to uh see i saw the radar on that well the little red scope for the snipe those are things that you look for you see the little sniping uh red dot and you get you get out of dodge because you don't want him to scope on you for too long now this guy tried to push in you know he did the right thing he just you know was overwhelmed you know and if he can clean that up you know he can do a lot better Now, the one thing is, is if you're bumping into each other, imagine the good players are trying to get to point A to point B as fast as they possibly can. And if you're slowing them down, it makes it to where they could get killed a lot easier because you stopped them from getting to that point. I mean, the whole reason was to get there so that you could beat them to that point so that they wouldn't focus on you, whether it was a sniper rifle or setting up. So, 
if you're in a game and, and you realize you're bumping into someone, just think about what it's doing to them, you know. Now here's my strand. I use the strand. Not because the super is good, because the super is horrible. You know, it just it's it's fast. It allows you to get to point A, point B so much quicker. That means I don't have to be right up on them, but I can get up on them as fast as I want. And look at that, seven and zero. Oh. It's just about putting yourself in the right positions. Now here's another auto rifle. I'd have to say it's mid tier. It's it's not great. It's not um, fantastic in any means. Um, if you use this rifle, then I would recommend onslaught, and that's what I have on this auto rifle. It's onslaught. And the reason is, like I said, you know, I, I am testing weapons out. I wouldn't normally use that auto rifle trying to go flawless. You know, this is my, my fun time now. You know, like testing out weapons. But I have Onslaught on it, and I wanted to see how well it would do. Because if I can get a kill, imagine you're going a one-on-one -on -one with somebody. They've already chunked off half your life going on that one-on-one, -on -one, but you were able to get the kill. And then the second person has full life. The onslaught wraps up that um, auto rifle so that you know you're shooting at a higher RPM. Which you know now since you were down, well you didn't have to do as much uh, bullets into them because you're able to kill them so much quicker, and it allows you to make a comeback. Poor guy had a rocket launcher. The only thing is to see he scoped in and. Uh, when he was scoped in, he can't see me on the side of him. You know, those are those are things that they have to get used to when you're pressure on them. Because you have to learn to watch your radar. Uh, I'm watching my radar up on the top left corner um, about every two seconds, three seconds, you know, max. And if you're not, then, you know, there's no... <laughs> yeah, it's it's like having a cheat code in a corner and you're not using it. Now we lost that round. It's okay. I used that strand. I was expecting to get that kill, and I ran into him, and he didn't kill him. So I was I was very surprised on that, you know. But you know, I won't make that mistake again. See, this time I'm I'm ready, but he had a partner next to next to me, and that's that's where sometimes if you get too aggressive and you weren't paying attention to the radar. You saw how, yes, I got the kill, which was my one-on-one, -on -one, but I didn't look at my radar for if there was anyone else, and I put myself in harm's way. And if my teammate was too standoffish, they they would have just got the revive, and then it would have just been three-on-two with them. Um, but I'm glad that the teammates that I'm with here pushed with me. Um, that could have been very, very bad. Okay, I got the one person down. Now I, I saw that he put a little strand clone there, and you know you don't want to be standing <laughs> next to it. Okay, so we're making a a run back here using this this auto rifle. Horrible. You know, there's so many better weapons that you could use that are accurate and longer distance. So if you see this auto rifle, I don't really recommend it. Some people like it, um, but it's no way in meta. Uh, if you were going to use this, I would recommend Onslaught. This submachine gun that you see here is great. I, I mean, it melts. And Nature of the Beast on it, when you hold that square button, man, that thing shoots fast. See how much damage he's already done to me? And this auto rifle did nothing to to help me. 
it would have been better off. Well, I have teammates there, but it would have been better off if he could have came in flying. And um, since I was already low, you know, what's the thing that you do? You're you're low and you're hurt, so you um, you hide, and then you would have somebody come in and pressure you. I mean, that would have been his best option to do was to come in and attack on me and get me down since I was so low already. <coughs> Sorry, I still got this cough <coughs> and I apologize for that. There, I ran into my uh, teammate which slowed me down. I took a different angle. Yeah, you know, I was trying to get behind him. See, I just took out two people that were behind. They were focused on someone else and um, made it very, very much easier for me. Those are the things I was talking about with angles. You're trying to get those angles. Now he was trying to come in with the shotgun. But you just see how the TTK on it is not great. And if you're not nailing the headshots, you're doing so much less damage. And if you're not able to use a weapon because it bounces too much and it's all over the place, um, you're not hitting those headshots and you're, you're just going to lose the battle. Because I bet you that they're not missing because they got a better weapon. Now see how I came in there? Came in aggressive. He has no teammates that were even protecting him. Look how fast I can get around the map. I can corner him off. I can get my revive. <laughs> my teammate keeps going down. <laughs> Poor guy. He's... Oh, and another one. So this is the submachine gun I was telling you about. It. One of the best in the game. I had to at least have one good weapon on this. Try not to use it too much, but when I'm up close, you know, I have no choice. Because this one's not going to do any good. It's, it's more of a medium range weapon. And it's not going to be doing any damage up close compared to a submachine gun or... Um, you know, a shotgun or a fusion rifle. Those would be one shot kills. This is more for like this range right here. He has no other choice but to run and now he's getting overwhelmed. You don't want to be in shotgun range so you, you put yourself in, a, in an area where you know like I didn't feel like I was ever in a threat. So I put myself in where he wouldn't expect me to be. Whether it's up high and coming down, sliding in at an angle, taking a, a little bit more of a, a distance, whether it was like, you know, three feet distance. And if a shotgun's coming at you, you backpedal. You want, always want to move backwards. So if you're not familiar with going against shotguns, do that. So this is like a little ledge, except for it's on this side, not the other side. And see, he saw the radar. He knows the radar was there. But he didn't expect me to be on that ledge. Now, see how there was two different angles with the uh, teammate shooting one top part and I was shooting on the left part of it. And there's nothing he can do about it except for run, get out of town, and regroup. That would be his only bet. Ten and one. With a horrible weapon. And it's not because of this weapon, it's just putting myself in the right positions, not making dumb mistakes. See how he came in with a shotgun? Now, if I would have been just standing there, well, now I want to get out of there. I know now, now I know he's got a fusion rifle. But I'm not making it easy for him. I'm not standing stagnant. I'm not allowing him to get that where he's scoped in on me. He's losing his ability to focus on me. He wants to scope in on me and do that fusion rifle, but yet I'm all over the place. I'm whether I'm dodging, you know, I'm sliding, I'm jumping. I'm not in the same area as he thinks I am, and I'm not in the same position.
Ooh, the little strand, little sibling things, huh? Usually my clone blocks it, so I, when I see that, I use my little clone thing, and they suck up on that. See how he didn't know where I was? He lost track of me because I was above him. And in this game, the way that is positioned for you to see, you can't see in areas that you're not looking right away. And depending on how his settings are, if his settings are really, really slow, um, it takes him a second to get there. Which you're laying in bullets. And then knocking him off target too with, with hitting them. All right, my team really didn't do much. Okay, so you can kind of get a feel for how your teammates are. And you're like, okay, well, guy died twice and didn't get any kills. And the other, team on your, other guy on your team didn't do anything. So you got to put yourself in a better position. And you can't be as aggressive that you want to be. You have to put it in a more safer, aggressive way now. Now, the shield won't kill you. So if you ever run into the shield, it'll always take you down to 1 HP. It'll never kill you. You could walk through that 100 times and it, it won't die. But it will take you to 1 HP. And that shield, if you notice, there's like a little frost around the corners of it all the way around. You know, it, it's almost like a, a different color. You can shoot through that. That's not a barrier. The barrier is like more closer in the center. The outer skirts of that shield can be shot through and you can shoot through it. It's not bad. One clip takes out the shield. Those are things that you learn in the game that you're like, okay, wait, well, hey, that works. All right. It's my submachine gun. It only takes one clip. Now, if it took two clips, imagine you got to be sitting there for two clips trying to, you know, shoot it, unload your whole gun, reload it, and then do the same thing. And then depending on how many bullets it takes to destroy it again, you know, and then fire at the person, at the person behind that shield. Now here's a kid Ted. I had a good row on it that I I liked. I tried it out. I really didn't like it. You know, I've tried out many of these weapons of this Cantata 57 and had like the perfect rows on them and not one did I ever like. Not one. I wanted to like them so much. Now, the one thing that sucks is if I die, I'd have to say 80%, 90% of the time, we lose. I don't know if Bungie always gives me players that are not um, either focused or great. Because I swear a lot of times they, put the, they stack the team against me. And the way I'm winning is because I'm, you know, aggressive and getting the kills. But if I'm ever where I don't have the three kills, it, it's almost like the team is doing horrible. You know, the, my team can never get any kills. And then that gets frustrating. But as long as you remember to adjust what you're doing, like in this situation, I'm using an auto rifle that... I'd have to say is sucky for trials. Oh, you ran into my clone. That's what I wanted. <coughs> now, in my in my um, ability on this, I'm using those boots that uh, they're like bombardiers. And when you dodge, not only does it leave a low person of yourself that does damage to them mine drops bombs too and when it drops the bombs and explodes on them it's a one shot kill you have to try that out see if you guys like it in trials
anywhere. Competitive. It's regular PvP. Now this guy's standing with a shotgun. You see how he was there? Um, there's no way for him to hit me at that range to one-shot kill me. But he was scared because of the radar. He saw that someone was nearby, and he brought that out. But when I came into the picture, he kept that gun on there. And what he should have done is just switched and went back to his primary. Or slid at me and made it difficult, not by sliding forward at me, slide to an angle and then approach me. Because, remember, I'm already shooting straight. You don't want to become straight at me when I'm already shooting at you straight. Make it to where I'm not hitting those shots. Now squatting takes you off the radar, which is what I did there. I was letting my life get back up. And I was squatting to take myself off the ping. Uh, I will ping still, but it'll be very slowly. So if you're ever trying to get life back, don't stay out of the picture for too long. Just enough to at least see it going back up before you get back into the game. So you don't want to be pushing out now. As soon as it starts going up, you're okay. See how I saw the radar? So I'm stopping them down here. If you're ever in a situation and you're capturing a flag, you can be in this little bottom corner right here and you can squat and they don't even see you from up here. See, they can't see you. And um, you're still able to capture it too. So they could be standing there going, what the hell is going on here? Why am I capturing? And you're really there. And then with your little radar dot, because it's glowing red, they get really confused. And they're like, oh, great, somebody's nearby. And they're looking around frantically, not knowing exactly where you are. And here's where I, I talk about a sniper is about to get the first kill, and then you use your other weapons to push in. You're not trying to stay out there forever. You know, you're using it to get the one kill. And then pressure. So I'm using it as my long range. I saw someone there. I put my little clone there. Because it can suck up some of the damage. As he's shooting at me. So I can get away. That's another thing that's good with the, uh, the strand little person that you you have with you now see how I jumped over the door you know I don't need to keep running where he can see me now I had another little clone I put it out here see how I'm in his face you know it, it makes it really hard because he didn't have a chance to look at the radar and go oh, where is he I'm already there And some people get so frantic that it's like they, they're like a deer in headlights and they just stop. They, they don't know what to do. See, this guy scoped in. He can't see his radar. Didn't even know I was shooting at him. That's because he scoped in and shooting, trying to shoot at someone else. <coughs> you know, he's not trying to hit fire it. So when you hear bullets, it's your time to push. Because most of the time, 90% of the time, when you hear it, they are uh, they got zoomed in and they're not seeing you on radar. So you guys learn anything? Are you, uh, have you guys seen any spots here that you've liked? Uh, you see how I'm, I'm using this ridge? I'm not overextending this ridge where I'm putting like half my body out there. They could probably only see my head. Say I'm like a distance away. You know, I don't need to stick my whole body out there so they can hit it. Okay, so we got the kill. This is time to push in. Now you become lions and you're out there. 
You don't let them regroup. That sniper rifle was only to get one of them down so that you have leverage to push with all your teammates against a three on two. Now another cue is using your sound. With your, with your ear things on, and if you turn in your settings and you turn your sound all the way up in game, I can hear the footsteps. So it's another way to where I don't have to like always see my radar. I can hear you coming up on me. So if you were walking, I can hear every step that you, you come at me. And I can unscope out. And then on your ear things, you can tell if it's the right side or left side. So you just kind of aim in that direction. See how we were double teaming them? That's that's what you want to do in trials. Let's get those uh, tag team shots in. And just watch all your um, your teammates' backs. Don't let them get the revive. And we don't have to push. I would actually recommend not to push. And the reason why is let your super go up. It's three supers coming up instead of just one. They have one person. Yeah, he's getting his super, but it's one person and you have three on your team that are just getting supers right now. So it's better to just let him be out there and you guys collect. It's like a bargain deal. <laughs> so if you're in that situation, remember, get your supers because your super is constantly going up. Now, I see how I saw the ridge of his head? So I was ready for him. Now that we got the kill, I don't need to be back there, not helping my teammates. Now he's got a sniper rifle. I saw a little red blink. He won that engagement. I was focused on the other guy. I'm glad my teammates uh, were able to win that. That was my mistake. But that's how you learn. You learn, oh, I put myself in a bad position. And I wasn't hitting my shots. You know, so you can say that I choked on that one. And I should have slid in and went um, closer to get the more damage per shot. So you can kind of see, as I'm shooting them with the weapon, you can see how much damage it's doing. And see how he switched to the shotgun, but I kept myself in distance, and I, I made it seem like I was going to go up in his face, but I was really backpedaling and moving backwards. So I knew it, it would do a lot of damage to me, but it wouldn't be enough to kill me. Now, years ago it would have, but not now. I mean, shotguns have taken such a nerve. That's why a lot of people are using uh, slug, is because they can they can hit you at a f lot further distance. Because he is a slug. But it's harder to hit, too, by whipping around a corner. So, you know, when you had a, a shotgun and he comes whipping around a corner, he just has to hit a body. But when you have a slug, you got to hit the head. So what do you guys think of the uh, trials? Do you guys like the, the more um, ammo crates? Or do you guys like less ammo crates? Do you like it where when you spawn in? you have ammo or do you like it where you have to run to the ammo crates so that they don't get in position because remember if you have to run to something to get the ammo instead of already having it you can't set up you have to get the ammo and then set up so it leaves i like it where you have to run to the ammo crate that's just personally me because it changes the game up you know it's not the same old game you have to now learn something new because if you're using like a shotgun or a sniper or a fusion rifle, you need to get that green ammo. But what if you were running two primaries and you didn't want to have to worry about it? You could move in on them right away while they're trying to get into a position that they're not ready for. 
and there's guns that that put in work with just regular prime. I mean, look at this. I, I mean, I'm killing a lot of people with just these primary weapons, you know. <coughs> so you know, you can definitely do it, but you don't want to go against somebody who has shotgun and fusion rifles, you know, and you don't have any. But you know, it's a choice you can do by coming into the game and not having to worry about ammo crates and you just move on to them as fast as you can. And now with Strand, I mean, just look at, see, you can see how, like, my bullets, I can't hit that far. And I already knew I had a teammate there. That's why you want to push in. It was an unfair advantage for him. So... One of us is going to win that engagement if both of us are shooting at them at the same time. Now, one-on-ones, I usually win 90% of my time. <laughs> I'll win my one-on-one -on -one engagements. But, um, but you know, even if you weren't a good player and you were to fire at the same time at the same person, and even if he was able to kill one, you know, the other one will get him. See how I came in and I I got my one-on-one -on -one kill, <coughs> but then I died to the other team because there's three of them there. And my team wasn't good enough to survive that. So now I know, okay, you know, I, I know what kind of team I have. That's why, you know, I test out the team to see if they're, what kind of players they are. You know, like, okay, well, you know, maybe they're not aggressive players. Okay, well, I can't play that way. Um, maybe they're not good at one-on-one um, -on -one engagement, so they got to do the two-on-ones. So I got to set myself up for them to be able to push with them. See how I'm, I'm sitting there pushing with them? I didn't leave his side. It's because I didn't want them to die. You know, I had to change my game plan up. So I, you know, I test out the waters what my people can do and what they can't do. So the aggressive thing didn't work. Um, for this type of team that I'm playing with, because they're they're not that type of player, you know, they haven't learned that that style yet, and or maybe they don't play enough PvP. That maybe they're PVE players and are not used to this. You know, you can't just force somebody to play your style. You got to change up to theirs if you're a good player. You know, that's why you watch YouTube videos. Oh, that was see that I got the team shot. See, it was like a one shot from each of them, which took me out. That's team shots. And I had a teammate that got the revive. And now we got the revive. Now we're pushing in on him. We're the aggressive and we're more. So I, I looked through um, my scope for a second. I didn't keep myself out there because see how I, I switch weapons. You don't want to stay with the same weapons. I see radar over here. He already got him. Damn it. Protecting him from a distance. Boy, did I just foul up my shots. Wow. Yeah, I, I totally messed up those those shots. <laughs> that was my bad. Uh, I, <laughs> I did horrible on that. I mean, I made up for it because I wasn't going to let him pass while I was watching the guy get the flag. Ooh, did some work right there, huh? Let's get myself on this little ledge here. Put a little clone here in case he decides to want to be aggressive and push. So I'm more of alert on aggressiveness because I am aggressive, so it's right up my alley. So I'm waiting for him to push in. Twelve. 
12 and 2. Made two mistakes on that one. Oh, it flinched me. Man, I couldn't I couldn't focus on him. I every time I was trying to scope in on him, it was I was getting flinched. I was good on his keeping the keeping the bullets on me. Ain't gonna flinch me on this gun too much. Certain weapons will flinch you a lot harder than other ones. There's certain certain weapons I can use, and you can shoot me, and it's not going to flinch me. See, I saw the red. I'm always zoned in on that red. If that red is there, see how he just stayed there? Made it so much easier. <laughs> I guess I already knew where he's going to be. I looked in that area where I saw him last, and he stayed there. So that's what you can see firsthand, what it looks like when you, um, when you stay in one position for too long. This game is about moving. It's about getting to different positions, different spots, not allowing them to see you in the same spot. <laughs> Time to push in. Is that what we had the advantage? No need to let them get their life back. Once your life is down, you keep it down. You know, this... There we go. Okay, now that we got the kill, now we push in. That's why we say, don't be the first person down. Because as soon as you are that first person down, the rest of the team pushes in. And see, I went flawless. Well, thank you. This is Wicked Fox. I hope you guys enjoyed.